Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm collabing with two very special people right here. This is Laura Izumikawa and her baby Joey. I'm sure you guys have seen her baby all over Instagram. She is famous for dressing up her baby while sleeping and she actually just came out with her own book called Nap Time with Joey and it's filled with so many fun costume ideas. She slept all the time and she slept so deeply and so I thought it'd be fun to kind of put some props um, around her and she didn't seem to mind or you know notice and so I started challenging myself and starting to put on wigs and little costumes on her to see how far I'll go um, and yeah it just ended up becoming this large collection That's of cool. photos we wanted to do something really funny and uh, different. Something that we haven't seen a lot of kids do. And so we chose Lord Arquad from Shrek because he is the funniest character on that <laughs> movie. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try and play that off this year. We're gonna dress up as Shrek. She kind of has the hair going on already. Yeah, <laughs> kind of on the side. All right, so make sure you guys pick up your copy of Nap Time with Joey. And you tell them where they can find this. Yeah, uh, you can find it at where, anywhere books are sold at uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com, um, yeah, any independent bookstores really uh, worldwide. And you're also having signings for this? Is it just for the month of October? Or uh, no, we're going to add some dates in November oh, hopefully yay. and um, I'll probably do some pop-up signings for books that you bought anywhere. That's so cool. Um, just so we can meet our fans. Yeah, so we'll put all the information to any book signings that she's going to have in the future down in this, the description oh. box. So make sure you guys check that out and we're going to start with the brainstorming and designing of Joey's costume. Okay, so I'm starting with the hat because it's one of the most challenging parts of the costume. And before I get started, I just wanted to say that this is all trial and error, and it's really up to what you want your costume to look like. Lord Farquaad's hat looks a little squarish to me, so I started with a square pattern and rounded out the corners. One square will have a circle cut out in the middle for the head. And to determine the size of the circle, I took the measurement around her head and used a circle skirt chart to find the radius. Once my hat pattern is finalized, I can go ahead and cut out two bottom pieces out of a red velvet fabric and two top pieces from a cream colored fabric because his hat is color blocked. Next, sew all the way around the outside edges of both pieces, but make sure to leave an opening on the top piece because we'll be stuffing it with some cotton to give the hat some body. Since I can't shove the stuffed piece underneath my machine anymore, I hand sewed the center circle closed. Lord Farquaad also has some piping around his hat, so next I sewed the piping right sides together to the red piece. I don't have a cording foot, but I was able to get close enough to the stitch line with my regular presser foot. I also recommend that you sew the piping before you stuff the inside of the red piece. Now we can pin the two hat pieces right sides together. The top hat piece is a little bigger than the bottom now because of the stuffing, so just make sure to evenly pin everything together. Again, I could have done all of this before stuffing the hat to make sewing a little easier, but that's okay because it all worked out in the end anyways. Turn the hat right sides out when you're done and then cut a wide strip of velvet fabric for the headband. 
Originally, I made an actual headband, but when Joey tried it on, the hat fell off way too easy. So Laura suggested I just make it like a graduation cap and add some elastic to the bottom so it stays on better. I sewed the wide strip around the circle and then trimmed it to about 2-3 to three inches. Then I stretched and sewed some elastic around the bottom so it hugs her head. To finish off the hat, I glued some gold ribbon around the top of the headband with fabric glue. Moving on to the next part of the costume, Lord Farquaad's shirt with the awesome paint sleeves. I borrowed one of Joey's dresses to use as my pattern piece by tracing out the full front of the dress. Then I fold the front piece in half and use it to trace out the back side. Since the back will have velcro, I added an inch seam allowance down the center back and cut out two pieces. Baste all the shirt pieces right sides together and sew down the side seams and shoulder seams. To create the puffy sleeve pattern, I traced out half of the sleeve from her dress and slashed and spread the top. Doing this will give us more puff around the shoulders. Then completely cut the sleeves into three even pieces and add seam allowance along the sides. Remember this pattern is only half of one sleeve, that means we need to cut two of each piece to create one full sleeve. Next cut out five 5 inch strips out of a cream colored fabric. Place the pieces in between the red sleeve and sew them right sides together all the way down to create one long piece. Make sure to start sewing at the bottom of each piece so everything is lined up. Now to create the illusion of the sleeves puffing out in between the red strips, fold each red piece right sides together so that the seams are touching, and then sew down one inch from the top and bottom. I pull the cream color sleeve out and pin it in place to make sure that it has enough puff before sewing it down. Then I can go ahead and trim away the extra fabric at the top. Fold the sleeve in half and sew the underarm seam closed. Then pin it right sides together to the armhole. Since I slashed and spread the top of the sleeve earlier, I gathered the sleeves to fit the armhole using two rows of basting stitch. Next, I hem the bottom and center back of the shirt and sew the velcro closure in place. All that's left to do now is embellish the shirt with some gold ribbon. I copied the same design he had at the bottom of his shirt and marked it out with some chalk. Then I just glued and cut each ribbon piece all the way around.
I forgot to create two smaller squares in between the big ones on the top line, so I just used some thicker gold ribbon, which worked out really well. He also has some gold trim cuffing the sleeves, so I sewed that on as well. To make the cape, I'm using a different red velvet fabric to add a contrast against all of the other red colors in the costume. Then measure out how long you want your cape to be and cut the bottom out in a curve as well. Taking some black leather fabric, I traced the upper back side of the shirt and cut it out. Then I gathered the cape to fit the leather piece and sewed them right sides together. To attach the cape on, I put velcro on the shoulders, that way you can easily take it on or off and still access the velcro at the back of the shirt. The gloves are surprisingly the trickiest part because her hands are so small. I got a quick tracing of her hand, but I actually need them to be very spread apart to make it easier to sew. You also want to make sure you're using a four-way stretch fabric. Mark out the glove pattern onto your fabric, but don't cut it out completely. What really helped me was to not cut around the fingers until after you finish sewing because you're sewing in very tight spaces. When you're done, you can trim around the fingers and clip the corners and turn it right sides out. Lastly, add some gold trim around the top. To make the necklace, I bought some yellow foam and did a bunch of trial and error tests until the necklace fit correctly. Then I painted it over with some gold paint and outlined the edges with some gold puff paint. Lastly, I hot glued some blue gems onto the necklace and outlined it with some puff paint as well. And to close the necklace in the back, I used Velcro. The boots in the belt were the quickest parts of this costume. For the boots, I cut out two leather pieces and folded the top to look like boots and then just sewed elastic at the top and bottom so that it can easily be taken on and off. For the belt, I found this really cool buckle in the fashion district and glued a bigger blue gem in the middle. And then I cut a strip of leather that would slide into the sides of the buckle. What I did was place the rough side of the velcro at the ends of the belt and then glued the soft side all the way around. That way you can adjust the belt to whatever size you need it to be. And we're finished. Here is the final costume.
Thank you all so much for watching and happy Halloween. If you enjoyed this video, share it with a friend and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. See you guys next time. Bye.